Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu Zubadaji. In this video lecture, we will be talking about nested PCR. Nested PCR is a variety of uh, PCR, the common format of polymerase chain reaction. It is slightly modified to minimize the production of unwanted uh, amplified portion of the DNA. Because in normal PCR reactions, we use two different primers. Uh, so we use two different primers to produce and amplify specific target DNA. But those primers can self-anneal to form primer dimer and also those primers can adhere to some unwanted region of the DNA that can amplify some unwanted portion of the DNA except for the target that we want to amplify. If this thing originates, it creates some problem. To minimize this production of unwanted fragments of the DNA during the amplification, we use nested PCR. Because in nested PCR, we use two different set of primers to minimize that. In this case, uh, it increases specificity of the DNA amplification and we use two set of primers. First set of primers which are external primer pair which are added to some uh, region flanked by the target DNA and second set is internal primers which will bind to the exact target set of the DNA. So let's look at here. In nested PCR, the whole process is conducted two times. Let me take a color. There are two set of PCR reaction carried out. We do the first round of PCR, couple of cycles of PCR to amplify some fragment. Once that is done, we take the product of PCR number one and we use that product as a target for the PCR number two. Then after that, we'll get our product and this after second time of the PCR round, all the products that we get are much better and they will be uh, like much more accurate. Let's say here in this case, as you can see, it starts with this portion. Let's say it includes with introns as well as exons. Now our target DNA is this exon part. Introns we don't want to amplify. So the first set of primer, which are external primers, are attached to the intron area, which are flanked by the exon target. Now once they are paired, then they will amplify all this region, including the target region of the DNA. This is the amplification. Amplification is complete. After this amplification is done, then we take the target and we use a second set of primer which will bind to the inner side of the target region. As you can see here, denoted with the red color. It will bind to the inside regions of the target DNA. That will amplify a specific area. Now, for example, the target that we were talking about is between this middle area, which is denoted with the purple color here. Ultimately, we can produce the region that are specified for the trait. So let's look at here in much more details for this whole process. We start with a double-stranded DNA. This is a double-stranded DNA, but the target sequence is this red region that I'm marking. This is the region of target sequence written as target sequence. Now what we do, we separate them. After the separation, we use first set of primer. So first primer set, which are known as external uh, primers. Those will bind far distant regions for the target sequence. Now remember, for this process, some of those primers may also bind to some other random regions of the target DNA. If the DNA is bigger, then it can bind to some any random region. Now in this case, as you see, on the first hand, this, this, in this particular strand, if we amplify, that can amplify the target sequence. But in the second strand, it will amplify this portion, which will not carry our target sequence. So this product will be unwanted. Now in normal PCR reactions, we will get the mixture of both this type of products. We'll get the products with the target sequence, as well as we get the products without the target sequence in the mixture. And then we have to purify them and which is a tedious task. Now in this case, after running the second set of primers, we can get rid of this extra unwanted pair of the amplified DNA. How? Let's look at it. Now we go to the third step of this process that is running the amplification stage. After the amplification, you know, some of them produce this unwanted product as I told you. Some of them produce product with the target sequence. Now we use the second set of primer. The second set of primers will bind to the inner side of the target sequence. 
So if this is the target sequence, it will bind inside region of the target sequence. Now for this to work, we should know exact DNA sequence of the target region of the DNA. Otherwise, we cannot design the second set of primer, which are inward primers. Okay, so internal primers that we design will be specific to the target region inside. Once they will pair to the target sequence only. Now, the second set of primers will not bind to any of the unwanted region of the DNA because they are very, very specific. As a result of that, as these primers only attach to the near the target sequence, this target region only will be amplified or the rest of the unwanted fragments of the DNA won't be amplified at all. So after running this reaction in the two different stage using two different set of primers, we can get most of the amplified portions containing the target DNA only. And that is the importance and that is the beauty of nested PCR. So that in a sense, nested PCR, I hope you understand the process of nested PCR. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends. Thank you.